Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here on January 18th to talk about the first ever LPL LCK combined four game slate um, on DraftKings and for fantasy purposes. Um, yeah, it's very exciting. It's just, it's like I said, it's the first one. Um, and we love these multi game slates because, you know, it's, it's easier to be unique with your lineups for fantasy purposes. And, you know, these are the types of slates that we tend to do much better um, compared to the chalky two game slates where you have to get two winners correctly. Right. So um, I, I do think on multi-game slates like this, it's important to, you know, understand each team's strengths and weaknesses and also the rosters. And like, so basically, yeah, like substantive analysis on the rosters and the players and the kill upside for each of these four matchups. I think, you know, picking and picking and choosing which, which game to target um, in terms of kill upside. I think that's more <clears throat> uh, important on these uh, four game slates where you have to choose you know, certain games and certain teams to stack. So, yeah, without any further ado, let's dive in. Um, for LPL, the first game is between BLG and FPX, and BLG is a heavy favorite, and I completely agree. They looked amazing, especially Ben, and then their newcomers, June and Yagao, um, they looked really, really good. Elk and On were okay. I mean, they were in the bottom lane doing their own thing, but Ben and June were very much active throughout the entire series. Even though they lost that series, I still think that BLG um, was really, really good against JDG that time. So, yeah, I mean, ben and, ben and June really carry that team, I think, in my opinion. And Yigao can carry a team, uh, you know, within the series. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to – the game's going to be won in the top half of the map for BLG, and they, they definitely can. And then this – Particular matchup against FPX, I do think BLG can do that against Xiao Liahu, Hao Ye, Care. Hao Ye didn't actually look that great, in my opinion. Um, so I, I just feel like BLG should win this game like nine out of ten times, in my opinion. Just also based on their recent form, I just feel like BLG has the edge on in all, all the angles, really. Like Ben over Xiao Liahu, and then every single lane... Yeah, Gal over care. LW. I'm not a huge fan of LWX or Lele. So I do think Elk and On can definitely keep keep up the pace against LWX and Lele. So I do like BLG overall. Um, I do think they uh have a higher kill upside. Even though they played against JDG, BLG was constantly looking for kills and fights to engage in. And that kind of comes um with june at jungle trying to make plays he's a very very active proactive jungler um um in the lpl where he was for ig last season and the season before that i really like june as you guys know if you guys have been watching me in these videos he is one of my favorite up and coming junglers and now i mean with several years and you know under his belt he is becoming probably one of the top five junglers in my opinion in the league so He's moved up into that to that next level. Um, but I do think in terms of kill upside, yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty high kills. Um, I'd say high to medium kills for BLG FPX. Um, I do think BLG wins this matchup. I do want to see the little metric that I usually look at. I think it was more I think the high kill I will kill the high kill upside number, but it 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 was probably yeah, it was probably influenced by the fact that they played against JDG, who tends to play, you know, bloody um, compared to other teams in the LPL. But yeah, let's take a look at that. So JDG 0.87, BLG 0.87, they played against each other. Um, they're playing against FPX. 0.87 is pretty good, right? So, um, FPX is down here. Not too bad. 0. 0.70. He played against who? Was it anyone's legend? Who was it? Oh, Team WE. Yeah, that's right. I predicted Team WE could win that game correctly, which was good. 0. 0.70. Interesting. They played five games already. Who they lose to? He 
They beat FPX. They lost to EDG, which was expected. EDG plays slower. 7-0. So both 7-0. Wow. That is something else that um, Team WE played at that same pace. <laughs> 0 0.70 and then 0 0.70. Wow. Okay. And then so that means... FPX could play a little bit faster. Yeah, I, I like the kill upside. Yeah, I like BLG tonight quite a bit. Um, like I said, if I were to choose players from from the team, it would be from definitely. I would put more emphasis on the top half of the map, Ben Jun and Yagao. I know Elk will probably rack up kills just because he's AD carry and he is strong. Does a lot of damage. Um, but more than any other team in the league, I think I would focus um, in the top half of the map. All right. Next matchup in China is Weibo Gaming, their first game against Top Esports. All right. Top Esports and Weibo Gaming, I just want to point out before I say anything else, they are two of those contenders, top contenders that could win it all in the LPL or the Worlds. So they have very, very high expectations. Weibo Gaming has not played a game yet, but they have um, dominated apparently in the scrims, all their play, all the scrims that they played in. Um, obviously, with the firepower, with the shy, um, Xiaohu coming in here to Weibo Gaming from uh, RNG. Um, and then they have Light and Crisp as well. And then Karsa at Jungle is an interesting uh, addition for Weibo Gaming. So it's a new roster, but we'll see how that pans out. I mean, all these guys are good. Um, the shy and Xiaohu are probably great compared to everybody else on that team, but. You know, they have a very, 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 very good roster. And again, they're go but they're going up against another contender in top esports. And Cheng Tian in the top lane is finally getting the start. Uh, I guess two two starts in a row now. And then Tian and come, rookie coming over to play with Jackie Love. Uh, rookie coming over um, from B5. And then Mark, you know, staying here with Jackie Love. So, yeah, I mean, I do think there's a consistency there between Jackie Love and Mark there in the bottom lane, and Rookie does his own thing, and he's really good, and he definitely has the skills to go and lane against Xiaohu. And then Tian was one of the best junglers in the LPL last season, the whole last season, um, going up against Karsa. I do actually think Tian actually has some advantage there over Karsa, but Cheng Tian against the Shy is probably what is going to break the deal, and for me at least. Um, I do think Cheng Tian is good and very, very uber talented, right? But he tends to get a very, very aggressive, and and, so, and I feel like that is a bad recipe against the Shy. I think the Shy is the, the exact same type of player like Cheng Tian wants to be, who can dominate um, and influence the entire map, just being in the top lane and dominate the laning phase and split push. Um, I think Cheng Tian wants to be what the Shy has been, <laughs> um, but the Shy is still a better player in my opinion. So, but then Tian has advantage over Carson. So I, I do think it's a toss up. I do think any of either of these teams can win. Um, I'm just gonna check out some stats from top esports. Um, you know, they won two to zero in their last series, but they. Um, the kill upside was kind of low. Um, see, they played against anyone's legend and they were dominant. I remember watching that. Anyone's legend, as you can see, um, has played four games already. They lost all, all four games. They lost against Invictus Gaming, where I thought anyone's legend would perform much, much better, or at least is expected to play better than how they have um, done in the past series so yeah let's look at uh ig's fast ig's very fast i'm just looking at the kill upside stats real quick compared to other teams they play fast the rng play fast too yeah pretty pretty fast so i do think invictus gaming is playing fast um that tells me that AL's numbers 
Should have been up here. And then top esports down here. So top esports e likes to play a little bit slower so far. And Weibo Gaming likes to play a little bit slow too. So I do think it's medium to low. So let's look, let's um, make some notes from earlier. Kill upside. I, I said hi to medium. And then kill upside for this matchup. I say medium to low. Um, yeah. So I think that's it. Um, I do want to see. Um, let me see. Esports. LPL. Let's look at the total kills, kill props over under. It's 25.5 under. Wow. So 25. That is low. That's low too. So hmm, for what it's worth. Kills over under 25 for BLG. That is interesting. I would I think I would smash on over that kills prop there for that one. For TES and Weibo Gaming, it is right at 26.5. So they think it's gonna be bloody interesting. I I think otherwise. So I think that's interesting. That's where the discrepancy is. And I just feel like Weibo Gaming's pre past data attributes um to that number. So if I were a straight up better, I would definitely go on under for this Weibo Gaming one and then over in the BLG game. So that's interesting, I think. So that kind of throws a wrench in my analysis, but We'll see. Um, I do think this will be a very high kill game. I think BLG has has like has shown that they want to play aggressively. And same for FPX. So maybe that's the edge that we're looking for. Maybe we disagree with disagree with the kills odd kills over under number. So anyway, all right, let's look at the LCK matchups. All right, LCK. This is the opening day of the spring split. Um, there has been a lot of changes to all the teams, literally all the teams rosters, including T, uh, except for T1 rather. Um, as you can see, the first game is between what they call themselves now, not that one Kia, but oh man, what are they called? D plus Kia. All right, sorry, D plus Kia. So anyway, any decal is called DK, whatever. DK versus DRX. As you guys know, the DRX is the team that won the entire worlds last season. Um, they had deft, they had basically had all the guys that left. All the guys left except for the except for the support player in Barrel. So he stayed, he remained. He's the only one that remained, but everybody else is new to the team. Here you see Rascal. Uh, coming over from KT, I think, Croco and Faith from LB, uh, LSB, Sandbox. And then you see Duck Dom coming over from Nongshim Red Force. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's a new team, so we'll see how they pan out. I do think that's a pretty good team. I think that's good enough to make the playoffs in the LCK, but we'll see how far they go. And going up against Damwon Kia, especially when you see that they have a consistent jungler and mid synergy there to start the season with. I just feel like Damwon Kia should benefit from that quite a bit going up against the new team and new roster, especially in those critical lanes at jungle and mid lane where they can be dominant with Canyon and Chillmaker. They're superstars. And then now they have added Kana in the top lane who can be when motivated. Um one of the best top laners in the LCK or in the world. So I'm excited to watch him this year. I think he's going to perform very well. I think their aspirations are skyrocket high. Um, and then they added the world champion from DRX and Deft in his first game as uh, D plus Kia team. He's going up against his former team in DRX. Deft used to play for DRX quite a bit uh, for many years, <clears throat> and they he finally got the world's championship title. So it'll be interesting for him emotionally and 
you know, just to see. But I think Diamond Kia should win this pretty handedly. Um, like I said, I think it's the consistent jungler mid lane, mid lane uh, combo there, duo combo there. I think that's going to be the difference maker, to be honest. So I think in terms of kill upside, Diamond Kia like to play, tend to play a little bit slower last year. I want to see the LCK. How that one Kia fared the last season. <laughs> Pretty slow, 0.67. And then I think the uh, DRX, but that means it's a new team, but they still play kind of slow. So I think it's medium to low as well. Uh, I want to see kills over under. I bet it's even lower than 25. So let's see. Yeah, 20. Three basically. So yeah, that's pretty low. <laughs> All right. T1 versus Gen G. Um, as you guys, like I said, T1 kept all the roster. All the starters are the same. Zeus, owner, faker, Kumayushi, and Karia going up against Gen G. That has changed quite a bit. Well, not not quite a bit. Just the bottom lane. Doran. Peanut and Chovy remain on the team, but Ruler left the team after losing in the Worlds. Uh, now that pays and Delight coming from uh, Freddie Brion. That's an interesting pickup. I think Delight is very good. Uh, he's a solid player. But there are a lot of question marks surrounding Pays. Apparently, Pays is like a super phenom that's supposed to, you know... Uh, replace Ruler without any issue for the franchise, but we'll see. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, you know, in uh, when I see him perform consistently at the highest level um, in consecutive games. So we'll see. But, I mean, like I said, like I talked about Canyon and Showmaker, you know, being on the same team and having that synergy. T1 kept the, all, kept the entire team. So technically, according to that logic, T1 should win. I mean, that's the same team. They've been playing together for a long, long time. And you saw how well they played. Unfortunately, they... Fell, fell, uh, fell short against DRX, but um, I think they're going to be on a mission to go undefeated again, uh, so we'll see. But T1, I think there could be a somewhat hangover um, after the Worlds and all that offseason stuff, but I just feel like, you know, I think they'll be zoned in, so... I think Gen G, like I said, has a pretty talented roster with Dor and Pina Chovy still there, but in the bottom lane is the question mark. But as long as I mean Gumayushi and Karia do what they do the best, what they do best in the bottom lane over Pays and Delight, I think T1 should pretty handedly uh, win this one. I do think it's gonna be. I do think this is gonna be more. Bloody? No, I don't know. It's like with Canyon Croco, pretty aggressive owner, Peanut. Genji liked to play a little slower last season. Let's see, 0.71. Actually, I mean, let me see the last patch and stuff like that. Up and up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, pretty fast. I mean, Genji likes to play a little fast. So let's. I do think this will be higher in kills. So let's see if uh, whatever the Vegas this, uh, agrees. It's not on here. Hmm. Well, it's not on there. So that's that. <laughs> Since it's not on there, I can't say if I'm wrong or not. Anyway, all right. So I do think it's going to be kill upside medium too low as well um but i do think it's still higher than the kdrx just given the fact that i think t1 genji having those same rosters from last year from most of for most of the roster for genji and then all of the roster for t1 i think that's just gonna create a lot of back and forth fights i think it's gonna be a competitive match um going against each other that they know they're familiar with one another um, I just feel like the pattern or the trend rather is 
to be, you know, to gain advantage through kills and team fights instead of objectives. I think that's the current meta. I think I think objectives are important, but you saw how well T1 and DRX performed. Um, I just feel like DRX's tendencies and T1's tendencies in the world or in the playoffs to make it that far were good team fighting teams and all that. So I just feel like that's how the teams are probably being asked to play. So I just feel like that's going to favor the T1 Genji matches with the same rosters, most of the same rosters there. So anyway, so yeah, I think that's all I got for you guys today. Um, I do think, so I'll just capture the summary. I think BLG definitely wins. I think... Yeah, I think this one is interesting. I don't think I actually gave a prediction on that one, this one. Um, Cheng Tian Tian, rookie, Jackie Love. You know what? I think I'm going to go with top esports. I think Xiaohu did not perform very well um, in the later in the season, last season, and then Light and Crisp. I don't think they're quite as good as Jack Love and Mark. So I think top esports can definitely blow up. I think they're very inconsistent, will be at least, with Ching Tian and Jack Love and Mark. I mean, those are basically like three players that can blow up <laughs> on any given slate or any on any given uh, day if they don't perform well or if they tilt, you know, if they like, you know, lose die early in the game and stuff like that. So that can definitely happen. But I do think TES should be the favorite. Of Saturday. Yeah, they are the favorite. So I'm going to go TES wins 2-1. to one. WBG is definitely a live dog. And then uh, in the Korean matchups, I'm going to have to go DK wins 2-1, to a 2-0. Uh, to zero. I'm going to have to go with T1 as well. Two to zero as well. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at DFS Chan on YouTube or on Twitter. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, please, please hit the like button. It will definitely uh, motivate me to keep keep these videos up and keep them going. And please subscribe to the True DFS channel if you want to watch videos about other sports uh, for fantasy purposes. And then, yeah, and it's exciting. Like I said, it's LPL and then LSK is back today. Uh, so, yeah, I'll post the confirmed starters for the first matchup for between DK and DRX. But these should be the projected lineups, uh, should be the starters, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Good luck. See you later. Have fun out there. Thank you. Bye-bye.